Today, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about the powerful connection between your mindset and your morning routine. And I'm going to give you an assignment at the end of this training. Tomorrow, we're going to build on this. So this entire week, what we're going to be talking about are the components to your morning because your mindset and having a powerful mindset and being deliberate about what you're going to think about and what you're not going to think about, it begins the moment you wake up. And believe it or not, how you wake up, not when, but how you wake up and the first few things that you do in the morning will dictate your mood for the rest of the day, which based on science is going to impact your productivity and it's going to impact how you feel about your life. And it will also impact your mindset for the rest of the day. And that's why now that we've done in days one, two, three, four, and five, we've done foundational training. You've learned a tremendous amount about how your brain works, about your default network, about how to be a deliberate thinker. You've spotted your limiting beliefs. You've learned how to think this, not that. You've started the skill and the practice of the skill. Remember, it's a process, not an event, to be a positive thinker. Um, you've started practicing, catching your limiting beliefs and swapping from that default way of viewing the world and thinking about yourself and choosing deliberate thoughts. Now let's talk about physical habits that you can adopt that are very simple that will be life-changing because they will impact your ability to be in control of what you're thinking and to be deliberate. And that begins with how you wake up. So let me talk about the morning. You can think about your morning routine and whether or not you even have one in the exact same way that we think about the brain. You're either defaulting to something that you've always done that may not, no longer serve you, or you're getting deliberate and choosing to do something that's more positive and powerful because you deserve it. And that starts with your morning routine. So if you're the kind of person where the alarm goes off and you hit the snooze and then the alarm goes off again and you hit the snooze and you know eventually you roll out of bed and you step into your day and you maybe drink a big dark cup of coffee and you skip breakfast and you skip exercise and you're tired if that's how you start your day your mindset is going to be impacted by that if your alarm goes off and you immediately reach for your phone and you start scrolling through Instagram while you're in bed and looking at Facebook and you are putting all kinds of stuff in your brain that triggers FOMO, that triggers insecurity, that triggers anxiety, that is going to impact your mindset for the rest of the day. And so starting tonight, I want you to take control and be more deliberate about your habits in the morning. And what we're going to do this week is we are going to build based on science the most powerful morning routine that you could possibly have. Sorry, I'm just moving this around so that the Instagram channel is brighter. The most powerful morning routine that you could possibly have based on science. It's super simple. It will help you become a more deliberate and positive thinker. And I'm going to walk you through step by step. And you're going to be doing this with more than 230,000 people around the world. So what is the assignment tonight? The assignment tonight is very simple. And you're going to hate it. You're totally able to do this, and most of you are not going to. You're going to let your limiting beliefs and your default mode of thinking stop you from making this simple change. And the thing that I want you to do tonight, this is your assignment. This smartphone right here, I don't want it anywhere near your bedroom. Your assignment is when you go to bed tonight, you are to plug your smartphone in outside of your bedroom. If you live in a studio apartment, put it on the other side of the room. I don't want this phone anywhere near where you sleep. And there's a simple reason why. You're addicted to it. And if it's next to you while you're sleeping, as soon as you wake up, without even thinking, the default mode of your brain will mindlessly reach for this and you will lie in bed and you will look at your phone. And when you do that, you are putting in garbage into your brain before you even get out of bed. 
if you wake up anxious, if you wake up overwhelmed, if you wake up feeling like you're losing some imaginary race, if you wake up and you feel dread, if you wake up and feel negative or exhausted, I'm telling you, this is the reason why. And if you want to have a positive mindset this year, and you deserve to, then you also have to get very deliberate about your habits and about your morning routine in particular, because how you wake up matters. How you wake up determines your mood. How you wake up determines on your phone. Hold on. IG is pausing a lot. Hold on a second. Let's see here. Um, yikes. All right. Hold on a second. IG, uh, I'm getting a lot of, uh, let's get on Wi-Fi. Rendezvous. Let's see if that works. Looks like I'm on. Let's go back to Instagram. Okay, let's see if that works. Is that better, Mandy? Um, thank you for your patience, by the way. Normally, our streams are not as spotty, but when we started this program, I knew that I was going to be traveling 24 out of the 35 days that we're broadcasting live, and tech can be a challenge. And so for those of you that have been hanging in there on Instagram, if it's spotty, jump over to Facebook Live, jump over to YouTube, jump over to Twitter. We're streaming on all four platforms at once. Um, and we will also email you a link to this video, which is one of the reasons why, if you haven't yet, sign up for melrobins.com slash mindset reset, because we curate all this information for you and we tee it up for you every day. Um, so thank you for your patience as I am broadcasting from, uh, my parents' place. My mother's 70th birthday is tomorrow. And, um, for those of you that are just tuning in because the stream has been dicey, we're talking about the powerful connection between your mindset and your morning routine. In fact, I would say it's not even powerful. It's critical. You cannot have a positive in control mindset if you don't have control of your mornings. And it makes a lot of sense from a common sense standpoint, right? If you wake up and you're behind the ball, and if you wake up and you've got your phone in your face and you're not even out of bed yet, and you're looking at uh, everybody's perfect life on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter, or you're reading the news and getting stressed out, you're absolutely positively not going to start your day off right. So the Assignment that I have for you is a very simple one, and it's one that you're going to be tempted to ignore. Do not ignore this. Tonight, when you go to bed, you are to put your phone as far away from your bed as you possibly can. If you have a bedroom, get your phone charging outside of your bedroom. Turn the vibration off, and you can turn the ringer on. Um, and here's why. I know many of you are single parents. I know um, many of you have jobs where people need to get a hold of you. Uh, Instagram is reconnecting again, so I don't know what to make of this. Um, I apologize for the feed on Instagram, everybody. Uh, but if you, if you start your day by looking at this, your mind is hijacked and you're going to be playing catch up all day long. I want to give your brain a fighting chance to be deliberate. Tonight, what I want you to do is sleep without your phone. Plug your phone in outside of your room, and then when you get up, you're going to notice something. You're going to notice that you automatically reach for your phone. Your phone's not going to be there. You see, we're setting a trap. We're setting a trap so that you don't fall into the default mode of laying in bed and looking that thing. I want to give you a chance to catch your thoughts. I want to give you a chance to do a couple things in the morning based on science that will give you control over your day, that will boost your mood, and that will help you develop a much more deliberate and positive mindset. So you got it? If you're going to do this, I want you to put the, the uh, bicep pump curl you know, emoji or give me a thumbs up in the comments below if you're going to try this. Because it's a lot harder than you think. And even those of you that are like, oh, I don't look at my phone, baloney. Every one of us is addicted to this thing. I'd like to take some questions real quick about mindset, about the mindset um, morning routine connection, about the cell phone, or about anything related to mindset reset. Uh, Danielle from Facebook, I love routines as well, but what if you let go of your routine? Can you still embrace yourself and the day? I'm not sure I understand the question. I love routines as well. I think that yes, 
you can rec- if what you're basically saying is you have a morning where you don't do your normal routine and now it's noon and you realize, my gosh, I've spent the day, the morning in a negative mindset. Can you catch yourself? Absolutely. You absolutely at any moment during the day can catch negative beliefs. You can catch limiting beliefs. You can catch yourself when you default to the negative things that you've trained yourself to think. And you can five, four, three, two, one in five seconds flat. You can switch to a more positive belief. Absolutely. You can change your attitude like that. No question. You can put the force fields up if you feel yourself getting sucked into somebody else's drama. What I'm trying to tell you is that while that's possible and while you should do that all day, particularly as you are practicing the skill of having a positive mind, I am here to tell you based on personal experience that when you start to own your morning and when you start to take your morning routine seriously as a habit that you develop that contributes to your mindset and your happiness and your sense of control, it will change your life. If you're concerned about anxiety, having a morning routine that I'm going to walk you through step by step this entire week, this is key to curing yourself of anxiety. And it begins the night before. So Betsy asked, is it better to prep the night before? Absolutely. So the night before, I um, always plug my phone into the kitchen or I plug it into my closet. I turn off the alerts on my text messages. I turn off the buzzing and I leave the ringer on in case there's some kind of emergency. My kids know that they should call me if they need to reach me. We have a daughter who's in college and you know kids are all over the place these days. My business partner knows, call me if you need to reach me. Do not text me. And that one habit has changed my mindset for the better. It's changed my life for the better because when I wake up in the morning, I actually get out of bed. I don't scroll through my phone. And because my phone is nowhere near me, I don't even reach for it. I spend the first 30 minutes to an hour of my day before I even look at my phone. And it has been a game changer, both in my ability to cure my anxiety and in my ability to be deliberate about what I want A, to be thinking about, and B, what I want to be focused on for this day. Um, uh, Tatiana on Instagram, I switch my phone to airplane mode or turn it off completely for the night. Is this okay or the equivalent? It's, It's definitely okay, but I don't want it near your bed because I don't even want you tempted to reach for this thing and to start scrolling through it. You, we, we live in a moment of time, here comes my father, where we need to have major boundaries with our phone. This right here, it's supposed to be a tool, but we have become the tool. Advertisers know that they can make money on your attention. So when you look at this, whether you're looking at your email or you're looking at Facebook or you're looking at social media, You are giving the world your most precious commodity, which is your attention. And so you're going to hear me hammer the fact that boundaries with this, essential for your mindset, essential for your happiness, essential for your success. Um, Vicky from Twitter, why is morning routine so important? What two to three items should be a part of it? Why is the morning routine so important? A couple things. How you wake up has a scientifically proven impact on your ability to focus, on your happiness, and on your productivity all day. This is not something I've made up. This is well-established research. And I'm going to be explaining it to you in bite-sized pieces all week long. And so to preview it, we're going to be talking about this tomorrow morning. The two to three pieces of it are, for me, I wake up when the alarm goes off, and I'm going to explain the science why the snooze alarm is uh, horrendous for your productivity. It actually impacts the way that your brain functions when you do it. We'll explain that in a training this week. I then get up, and for the first couple minutes of the day, I plan my day, and I have a particular process that I go through that leverages something from Harvard Business School called the Progress Principle. 
Uh, I have a mindfulness practice. That could be anything that you want. It could be gratitude journaling. It could be meditation. It could be five slow, deep breaths. It could be taking your, your dog outside for a walk. And then on mornings when I can, I have a micro exercise practice where I do planks for five minutes or I do something to get my blood pumping on the mornings that I can. I, and I do all that before I ever even look at my phone because I put myself and my mindset first deliberately before I ever allow the world access to my mind. You do not want anybody to have access to what's going on up here until you've gotten deliberate about what you're thinking about first. Um, so that's a preview, but I'm going to, as I promised, this was going to be bite-sized stuff. If you've, if you've already watched the first 10 minutes of this, you got the training for today, which is the powerful connection between your mindset and your morning routine. And your morning routine begins the night before when you plug your phone outside of your bedroom and you go to bed without your phone anywhere near you. Um, the other reason why that's important is we know based on research that the blue light on these things impacts your ability to fall into a deep sleep. Sleep is essential for you to have a healthy mindset. And also when you wake up, if this is next to you, 87% of adults sleep with their phones or next to their phones. And 33% of adults check email in the middle of the night. And so whether you're willing to admit that or not, we want to break your habit of giving the world access to your mind and we want to make you more deliberate about how you are with your phone and the reason why is it has a direct scientific researched impact on your mood and your mindset all day. Um, I have time for just one or two more questions. Uh, if you have any other questions about this, seeing a ton of, but my phone is my alarm, I have kids. Do you see the excuses everybody? What's more important? If you have kids, do exactly what I told you. Leave the ringer on. If your kids need you, they can call you. If your boss needs you, they can call you. And this is really important for your kids too. You know, there's a lot of research about kids and phones and how they're hugely addicted. And the thing about kids and phones, particularly phones in their bedroom when they're going to sleep at night, is that if you have teenagers, teenagers are biologically hardwired to push away from their parents when they become teenagers. Their friends become their primary uh, support group. They become the most important thing in their life. And kids feel a obligation to stay connected to their friends. And they feel an obligation that if I'm not available for my friends, you know, that makes me not a good friend. And so to help your kids, you need to draw the boundaries for them. You need to tell them that they can't have their phone in the um, bedroom. You need to have a charging station in the kitchen and you need to model these very healthy and mandatory boundaries with technology, period. And so I get it. Your kids need to reach you. No problem. Plug it into the closet. Plug it into the bathroom. Turn the ringer on. If there's an emergency, they can call you. Yes, you can use your phone as your alarm. Plug it into the bathroom. Plug it into the closet. Plug it into the kitchen. Because if the alarm is going off outside of your bedroom or several paces away from your bed, guess what you're doing when the alarm goes off? You're getting up. And tomorrow... I'm going to explain the science behind why you need to get up when the alarm rings and why you should not hit the snooze alarm. I don't hit the snooze alarm because I understand the neurological impact that the act of snoozing has on your mindset, on your mood, and on your brain's ability to focus. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about tomorrow. The reason why you have to get up when the alarm rings, and it's not because it sounds like a good idea, it's because of the science behind how your brain works and what hitting the snooze button and drifting back to sleep for 15 minutes does to your mind. You're going to learn all about that tomorrow, and it is a game changer. So, Mandy and Danielle, do we have any other comments, questions, excuses? Give me the thumbs up if you're going to try this phone challenge. This is going to change your life. 
Try the phone challenge tonight. Give it one night. And I want you to notice as you do it, how drawn are you to your phone? How panicky are you that it's not near you? Do you feel anxious about it? When you wake up in the morning, are you immediately grabbing for it? I want you to notice the default mode that you have with this sucker right here. Because part of being deliberate and serious about being a healthy, happy, anxiety-free, positive, confident thinker is taking control and having boundaries between the world and your mind. And it's also having the assuredness that you can live without this thing. Today, what we're going to cover is we're going to cover the powerful connection between how you wake up and your happiness, your mindset, and your ability to be a deliberate thinker, okay? So there's a massive connection that is well established in neuroscience, in all kinds of research studies around the world by people a lot smarter than me, that the connect, there's an undeniable connection between your happiness, your productivity, your sense of control, the mindset and mood that you have all day long, and how you wake up. Notice I didn't say when you wake up. I said how you wake up. And in today's training, I'm going to explain the science around sleep, mindset, and how you should wake up every morning in order to set yourself up for the most positive mindset, the best sense of control, and the most positive mood and productivity that you could have. This is all based in science. This is not something that I'm making up. And this is also the way that I live my life. And it has been a game changer. After I explain this um, training, it's going to take about five to 10 minutes tops. Then I'm going to answer some questions from the training yesterday about plugging your phone in. And I will preview what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Because we're spending this entire week now that I've taught you everything about deliberate versus default thinking, I'm now teaching you how to create a powerful morning routine so that your morning routine reinforces your ability to be a deliberate thinker and to have a positive mindset all day long, okay? So we're going to go step by step by step. You already know that the night before, you're going to plug your phone in outside of your bedroom, away from your bed, so that when that alarm goes off in the morning, you're not reaching for your phone while you're lying in bed and reading social media uh, and the news, which is going to make you feel depressed and anxious, that you're getting out of bed and you have the ability to start your day without your phone in your face. That is critical for your mindset. Now let's talk about the actual act of how you wake up, not when you wake up, but how you wake up. And this is science, okay? Super important for you to understand that. If you've been following me for a long time, you've probably heard me talk about the fact that you should never, 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 never hit the snooze button, okay? And let me explain why. Here's how I want you to wake up. When the alarm rings, get out of bed, period. You want to be a happy person, you want to have a positive mindset, you want to take control of the anxiety, the depression, and the stress that you have, do not allow yourself, number one, when that alarm goes off, to turn it off and lie in bed and start to ruminate in your mind about everything that you've got to do today and how stressed you feel and to marinate in those negative thoughts. I do not want you to do that. You're going to use the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, and you're going to get out of bed. The other thing I do not want you to do is I do not want you, like I used to do, I do not want you, when the alarm goes off, to reach over and tap the snooze button. The reason why I do not want you to ever tap the snooze button is because of how snoozing for a couple minutes impacts your neurology. It impacts your brain function. Again, this isn't something I made up. This is well-established research. You see, I used to be a chronic snooze button hitter. When Chris and I were going through a really rough time, or I noticed in times in my life where I'm feeling stressed out or overwhelmed, when that alarm goes off, there's a small hesitation where I start to feel a little stressed and overwhelmed when I think about the day ahead. And it just feels so safe and so satisfying 
and 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 so tempting to reach over and hit the snooze button and doze off for nine minutes or fifteen minutes, and then the alarm goes off again, and then I reach over and hit the snooze button, doze off for five, nine to fifteen minutes, and then the alarm goes off again, and then I reach over. And the reason why it's tempting to do that is because you're delaying having to deal with your life. You are giving yourself a false sense of control that I can find nine to 15 minutes to just avoid having to deal with what I want to deal with. And so I don't want you to do that. And the reason why I don't want you to ever hit the snooze button is because of how dozing off for nine to 15 minutes impacts the way that your brain works. So let me explain to you the science of sleep. Let me explain to you why the snooze button is such a dangerous thing to do for your productivity, your happiness, your mindsets, your ability to be a deliberate thinker, your ability to be in control of your life. And look, I know that at least 65% of adults hit the snooze button every single morning. So the reason why I don't want you to ever hit the snooze button and why this is so important if you want to be in control of your mindset, of your happiness, of your mental health state is because of the science of sleep. So you and I sleep in cycles. And the reason why we sleep, there's a lot of reasons why we sleep, but there's one main reason. Obviously, we fall asleep because our body needs to rest and rejuvenate. But there's another major reason for why we sleep, and it has to do with brain function. When you sleep, when you and I are falling asleep, half of our brain is allocated to running our body functions. The other half of our brain is able to basically just shut off and not really work. And while you and I are sleeping, do you know what your brain is busy doing? Your brain is busy taking all of the memories and things that happened to you today and it is returning those memories and storing them in your brain, almost like returning books to a giant library system. If you didn't sleep every night, you would have no memories. One of the main reasons why we sleep is because by resting and allowing part of your brain to shut down for a while, your mind has the ability to store all of your memories from today. You wouldn't have any memories if you didn't sleep every night. And so part of the reason why sleep's so critical has to do with your brain function. It has to do with your cognitive abilities. And so the way that sleep works is we fall asleep. We sleep in cycles of about 75 to 90 minutes, and then we start another one. And we go into another sleep cycle for 75 to 90 minutes. And then we typically start another one and we start another sleep cycle that goes 75 to 90 minutes. And after two or three sleep cycles, or heck, if you're lucky, four of them, your body and brain go into a mode where for about two hours, your brain just goes into a state where it's getting ready to wake up. So for those of you that wake up naturally before an alarm goes off, or the alarm goes off and you've had anywhere from six hours plus of sleep, your mind is now in a state, it's not in a sleep cycle, where it is ready to wake up it is ready to start the day. It is ready to be deliberate. If you wake up in that state and then you reach over and hit the snooze button and you doze off for nine to 15 minutes, what do you suppose your brain starts again? If you're thinking a sleep cycle, you'd be absolutely right. And how long does a sleep cycle last? A sleep cycle lasts 75 to 90 minutes. So you drift off into a sleep cycle, your brain does, which lasts 75 to 90 minutes. All of a sudden the alarm goes off nine to 15 minutes later. Your brain is in a sleep cycle. You are in a medical neurological state right now that scientists call sleep inertia. It means that by falling into a sleep cycle and waking yourself up nine to 15 minutes in it, the cortic region of your brain is now trapped in a sleep cycle. And do you realize it takes your brain once you're awake four hours to shake itself loose of the state of sleep inertia? Why is sleep inertia a bad thing? Studies prove that when you're in a state of sleep inertia, it impacts your speed of processing. It impacts your ability to focus. It impacts your ability to do any kind of strategic thinking. So for you, if you're a chronic snoozer like I used to be, and you 
sleep and then the alarm goes off, then you hit snooze, then you drift into a sleep cycle, then the alarm goes off, then you hit snooze, then you drift into a sleep cycle, and then the alarm goes off and you get up. Your brain, you know how you say when you're a snoozer, you're always like, I didn't get any sleep and you feel so groggy and tired and you keep saying, I didn't get enough sleep last night. I didn't get enough sleep last night. Guess what? Has nothing to do with how much sleep you got. It has to do with the fact that when the alarm went off, instead of getting up, you started another sleep cycle. And then when the alarm went off 15 minutes later, you woke yourself up and now your brain is trapped in a sleep cycle. You're in a state of sleep inertia. It has nothing to do with how much sleep you got. It has everything to do with how you woke up. You literally have screwed yourself over. And so here's the deal. Here's one more piece of proof I can give you. You know how on the weekends or on a day that you're not working, the alarm goes off and you decide, oh, I'm just going to turn the alarm off and I'm going to snooze for a minute. You don't turn on the snooze button. You just turn the alarm off. Have you ever noticed when you go back to sleep on your own, how long do you normally drift off of sleep for? An hour to two hours. That's because your brain is executing a sleep cycle. You do it naturally. You've had that experience before, haven't you? Where you've turned off the alarm, drifted back to sleep, and holy cow, you sleep for like 90 minutes. That's a sleep cycle. So that's why I never want you to hear the snooze button. Because when you hit the snooze button, you force yourself into a sleep cycle, you wake yourself up in the middle of it, and then the first four hours of the day, you are battling sleep inertia. There's only one way to shock yourself out of sleep inertia, and that's to step in a cold shower. So if you ever have to get up at four o'clock in the morning when you probably are in the middle of a sleep cycle, just step in a cold shower, that'll shock your brain awake and you'll be out of a state of sleep inertia. If you keep hitting the snooze button, I am gonna tell you something. It's gonna make your anxiety worse. It's gonna make your depression heavier. It's gonna make your attitude negative. It's gonna make your ability to focus harder. It's gonna make your ability to be deliberate harder. And the simple solution is to force yourself out of bed. So building on yesterday, yesterday, last night, what you did is you plugged your phone outside of your bedroom so that when you wake up in the morning, your phone is not within reach and you don't grab it, setting yourself up for success. Today, we're now going to do the wake up challenge. So today, here's your assignment. Tonight, when you go to bed, let's build on this. You're gonna plug your phone in outside your bedroom and you're gonna do the phone challenge so that the phone is nowhere near you. Tomorrow morning, when that alarm goes off, use the five second rule. Do not reach for the snooze alarm. You're gonna go five, four, three, two, one, and you are going to get out of bed. If you have to wake up very early, hop in a cold shower. It'll snap you out of it. That's all I want you to do for today. I want you to take the no phone and add in the no snooze button challenge. And I want you to notice how different you feel. I want you to notice if you're a chronic snooze button hitter, do you feel a little bit more awake? Do you feel a little bit more focused? Do you feel less groggy than the mornings when you hit the snooze button over and over and over again? Because you know what? The answer is yes you are going to feel less groggy. Yes, you are going to feel more awake. Yes, you are going to be more in control and more deliberate about what you're thinking about. And so that's all that I want you to do today. Continue to notice your limiting thoughts and then redirect them to something more positive. Remember, it's not an event to have a positive mindset. It's a process. So all day long, keep noticing where you feel like you're not good enough. Keep noticing where those limiting beliefs are popping up. And now we're adding in the skills that give you boundaries and discipline and habits that protect your mindset. Plug the phone in outside the bedroom. When the alarm rings, five, four, three, two, one, get your butt out of bed and do not hit that snooze alarm. Will you be angry at me? Most likely. Am I okay with that? You better believe it. Because these small changes, while they're irritating, you're capable of making them. And when you make them consistently, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to gain control of your actions, of your mindset, and that's going to have such a game-changing positive impact on your life overall that I'm willing for you to be annoyed with me as you get out of bed every morning because your dreams deserve to come true. 
and you deserve to live without anxiety. You deserve to live successfully with depression. You deserve to feel less overwhelmed and less stressed out. And it all comes down to these teeny tiny little tweaks that you're making all day long. I'm not gonna think I'm not good enough. I'm gonna think I'm willing to try. I'm not gonna think nobody likes me. I'm willing to tell myself that the people that are around me love me. Love me. I'm not uh, gonna think I'm an imposter. I'm willing to think through hard work I can learn anything. By making these small changes, you will change absolutely everything. So today, um, we are building on the critical connection between having a positive, deliberate, healthy mindset and how you start the day and what your morning routine is. Uh, by way of recap, we've already covered why uh, the number one thing about your morning routine is that the night before you plug your phone in outside of your bedroom, you can leave the ringer on, turn notifications off. If somebody needs to reach you, they can call you, but otherwise you're going to bed. That's number one. Number two, the second the alarm rings, you are to wake up. No hitting the snooze button. Yesterday I explained in great detail the scientific reason why you do not want to hit the snooze button. Um, and the fact that based on research, it is medically proven that when you hit the snooze button and doze off to sleep, you put your brain in a state of sleep inertia, which impacts your ability to focus, your ability to be positive, your ability to process information for up to four hours. That is why it is critical. And step two of your morning routine is when that alarm rings, you five, four, three, two, one, use the five second rule and get out of bed. Now, number three, that's what we're talking about today. The third piece of your morning routine is that for the first 10 to 30 minutes of the day, the first 10 to 30 minutes of the day, that time is reserved for your dreams. That time is reserved for you. That time is time that you need to protect. You are not to pick up your phone. Do not turn on the television. Do not turn on the radio no outside world input. All I want you to do for the first 10 to 30 minutes of the day is I want you to give those 10 to 30 minutes to your dreams. I think your dreams deserve 10 minutes, don't you? And you're not going to give them 10 minutes if the first thing that you do is pick up your phone. It's just not gonna happen. Your attention is under siege all day long. All day long, the world is trying to sell you something or they're trying to serve up something that's salacious or tempting or curiosity provo provoking in order to get your limbic system, which is the interior part of your brain, the fight or flight, the part of your brain that's triggered by emotion and fear. They're trying to trick you to pay attention to things that just don't matter to your dreams, to your day-to-day -day life, to your family. And that is why it is critical, 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 critical that the first 10 minutes are reserved for you and your dreams. Now, you may be asking, what is it that you should be doing in those 10 to 30 minutes? I'm so glad you asked because I have a gift to give you today. Um, I have developed a journaling method. I'm not selling you anything. Don't worry. I'm actually giving you something for free. I've developed a journaling method uh, that I worked on for the last three years. I've spoken, I, I've, I've taught it to thousands and thousands and thousands of people around the world, whether I'm teaching it from a stage or whether I've uh, incorporated it into other courses or the other training videos that we've done online. This is a journaling method that I use. It takes less than five minutes. It's backed by science. And what I'm gonna do for the rest of the week is I'm gonna walk you step by step through the various prompts that I use in the first 10 minutes of my day to anchor my mood on something positive, to focus on the one thing that matters to me today, to practice gratitude and to draw boundaries between the things that I need to do and when I need to cut off access to work and when I need to stop working so that I can have a little bit of focus time with my family or with myself for self care, taking care of myself, whatever. Um, the gift that I'm giving you is in the email that's going out today, we are going to give you a link to the PDF of the five second journal. Um, you're going to get one. You're going to get the page that we that I fill out every single morning for free. You can look at it on your phone. You can um, print it out if you want. You can use it. 
Uh, if you want it, you can of course go to Amazon, but that's not the point of giving it to you. I'm doing these live trainings and I'm teeing up this information because it is so important for you to get deliberate about what you're doing in order to improve your life. And so I wanna share with you what I do every morning. I'm gonna share with you the science behind it and why I do it and the results that it has created in my life. And I'm gonna give you a free template to use so that you can try it out too, so that you can think and be more deliberate about what you're doing. That's the entire point of this, because the morning routine's only going to work if you make it yours. If you are a shift worker and your morning routine begins at midnight, all of these same principles apply. You need to make them work for you, otherwise you're not going to do it. And I'm the kind of person that if something sounds too good to be true, I tend to just sort of get like cynical about things and go, I'm not trying that, that's a gimmick. If I understand the science behind it, which is why I explain the science behind why you should never hit the snooze alarm when you need to get up and get going. Um, when I understand the science and the reason and the research behind something, I am convinced to try it. And when I see results in my own life, uh, then I keep doing it. And so again, today the training is very simple. You're gonna continue being deliberate about building a morning routine. Tonight, plug the phone in outside your bedroom, Tomorrow morning when the alarm goes off, you are going to wake up. As soon as that alarm gets off, you're welcome to hate me for that. That's fine. Five, four, three, two, one. Get out of bed. If you're using your phone for the alarm, walk across the room. Turn off the alarm. Do not pick up your phone. Do not. Go to a different part of the room. Go to the kitchen. Go to the bathroom. Go to your office. Go somewhere else. Crack open your notebook. The first 10 to 30 minutes are for you. Are for you. If you've got kids that get up really early, wake up 15 minutes earlier than you normally do so you've got that quiet time in the house for you. In the email that goes out later today, I'm going to put in the email the link to the PDF of the five second journal template. You can also get that at fivesecondjournal.com. If um, for some reason you're not on the email list, get to melrobbins.com slash mindset reset so we can get these things to you. And in tomorrow's post, we'll be sure to upload a link to the PDF so that you can reach it as well. I wanna answer a few questions. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna to break down the journaling method, which is why I want you to have it in front of you tomorrow morning when you wake up so you can try it so that the training goes along with it. I also wanna preview something. Many of you have been asking about whether or not we're gonna get into anxiety. You better believe it. Now that our trainings have covered default, the default network in your brain, how to become a deliberate thinker, thinking this, not that, learning how to spot your limiting beliefs and switching gears and choosing what you think about. We're now in the middle of building a habit in the morning that's gonna help support you be a deliberate thinker and will also give you control first thing in the morning so that you are in control of what you're thinking about. You've planned your day, you've pushed your dreams forward. That's gonna start you out in a totally different way. Then we're gonna get into topics like anxiety, depression, how to talk to your kids about anxiety, these are issues and um, mental health challenges that you face when your limiting beliefs, your worries, and your stress become not only your default, but they start to spin out of control and become the constant way that you think, not just the default that gets triggered. So we're gonna be covering all of that in the coming weeks. This is game-changing stuff, but we gotta start with the foundational stuff first. Default versus deliberate thinking, thinking this, not that, spotting your limiting beliefs and realizing it's a habit the way that you think that way, it's not the truth, and now building a morning routine so that the way that you wake up, how you wake up, and how you spend those first couple minutes of the day support your mindset changing and give you control through the rest of the day. Before I preview what we're gonna talk about tomorrow, let me jump um, into some of the questions uh, that we've got. And if you've got questions, just put them right down there. Um, tell me, did you take the phone challenge? Did you take the snooze alarm challenge? Did you hate it? Did you? What did you notice? Share with us what's going on because by you sharing your story, you're going to be inspiring other people as well. Even if you failed, so what? You're trying something new. 
failing is just as good as succeeding at something because you're learning something. And guess what? Tomorrow morning when that alarm rings, you get to go for it again. So shout out to Edith Shaw on Facebook. I wasn't sure if I could actually go to sleep knowing my phone was in another room, but I did. I turned it to silent and went to sleep. It was weird to say the least. And I did find myself reaching for it in the middle of the night only to find it wasn't there. Did you do that too? I know it's a really crazy habit to break because you don't realize how addicted you are. But here's the good news. This is what you just noticed. I really noticed the difference. I had space in my mind to think about my day. I visualized for a few moments. I thought about how my day will unfold. I wrote in my planner and all felt a lot more peaceful and calm. Deirdre, she accepted the challenge last night, which actually had her get out of bed to cut off the foam alarm. Then she put the phone back down until I was ready to check the news. I was so much more productive and awake before leaving my house to get to the gym. I will do this every day now. I am hammering this stuff because it works. Here's a few more. Amy Robbins on Facebook. You mentioned if you wake up before the alarm, you need to get up. I often wake up early, but don't want to get up yet. Am I out of luck and just need to get out of bed? Amy, look, you got to make this work for you. So if you wake up before the alarm and you have a meditation practice where you lie in your bed and you meditate and it works for you, do it. Then get up. What I don't want you to do, Amy, is drift back to sleep because drifting back to sleep causes your brain to go into another sleep cycle, which lasts 75 to 90 minutes. And if you wake up before the 75 to 90 minutes, you've put your brain in a state of sleep inertia, and that's going to impact your productivity for the next four hours and your focus for the next four hours. That's why I don't want you drifting back to sleep. I could never lie in bed. I'm not that kind of person because I will fall back asleep. I hate getting up. But if it works for you as part of your mindfulness routine, your morning practice to the, wake up before the alarm, have a mindfulness practice, and then five, four, three, two, one, get up, don't look at your phone, take the first 10 to 30 minutes for yourself, fantastic, go for it. Make it your own. That way you'll actually do it. Jane Harmon uh, McFarlane on Facebook, I start work at 6 a.m. every day and the alarm is set for 5.50. Do you suggest that I wake up earlier or can I do dream goal time before bed? I really want you to do it when you wake up. I would wake up earlier, Jane. I would wake up at 5.30 and here's why. Um, the reason why is I, when you wake up, you got a clean slate. What I would love for you to deliberately put into your prefrontal cortex, the executive center of your brain, is I would like you to deliberately put how you want your day to go, what's the one thing that matters to you, and one thing that you can do to advance your dreams. Why? If you go back to some of the earlier trainings when we talk about the two modes of the brain and the fact that we all have a default, default mode network that acts like a filtering system in our minds. Part of the reason why I want you to wake up and engage the executive center of your brain, your prefrontal cortex, and be deliberate about what you're thinking is that by doing that, we are reprogramming your default network. We are telling the default network in your brain, the fabric and filter system in your brain, what you care about and what we want help spotting opportunities around. You know how there are moments in your life where you feel like you're in a state of flow and you notice these magical coincidences and you spot all kinds of interesting connections and things just seem to happen. Part of the reason why that happens or the law of attraction works is because by getting deliberate about what you're thinking about and about what you care about, you are priming your mind to be programmed to see connections and opportunities. Visualization, the law of attraction, it's not just some woo-woo garbage. There's hard science that explains why it works and it has to do with your default um, uh, mode in your, in your brain and how when you get deliberate and you engage the executive center in your brain, your prefrontal cortex, you train your brain to help you spot opportunities. Finally, last question, Mikey on Instagram, why do I feel so guilty for carving out personal time? It's been hard for me since becoming a parent. I'll tell you why, Mikey. I bet it has to do with your limiting belief. I bet it has to do with that negative thing that you default to, whether you think you're not worthy or you think you're not good enough, that somewhere deep down inside, by taking time out for yourself, 
you are saying to yourself, well, I, I don't deserve to do that. And the only way that you're going to start to carve out personal time is if you go to war against that limiting belief and you create a new one. And the new one around personal time is I will be a better parent, a better father, a better husband if I take time and go to the gym. I will be a better parent, a better person, a better husband if I take time to work on my dreams. And by the way, you want your kids to know how to take care of themselves, right? Well, the only way they're going to learn it is if you model it. So if you can't do it for yourself, use modeling, having healthy boundaries and healthy habits as an individual, modeling it for your kids as your motivation. All right, I got to hop because there are 1,500 people in a ballroom downstairs that I need to give a speech to. <laughs> um, but tomorrow we are going to add on to this mindset training and the connection with your morning routine, and we're going to get personal. You're going to have a copy of my method and the journaling that I do every morning to prime my mind based on science. I'm going to walk you through step by step each one of the steps. I want you to try them. I want you to tweak them and make them your own. And I want you to continue to fight for that 10 to 30 minutes every morning. Here's the recap on your homework. Tonight, you're going to plug in your phone outside of your bedroom. You're going to go to bed. When the alarm rings, you're going to get up. Five, four, three, two, one. No snooze. You're going to turn off the alarm if it's on your phone. And tomorrow morning, you're going to take 10 to 30 minutes all for you. You can meditate. You can plan your day. You can print out the PDF we're going to mail you in a little bit. That's the uh, journaling page from the five second journal, my journaling method. You can fill that out and see how that feels. But you're going to practice grabbing your attention and being deliberate and setting your day up to go in the direction you want it to go in. And something's going to surprise you when you do that. You're going to be training your mind to help you make your day go in the direction that you want it to go. And you're going to start noticing all kinds of connections and, and magical things that happen. I know it sounds really weird, but it's true. This is the beauty of what happens when you get deliberate about what you want to see in the world. You get deliberate about what you want to say to yourself. And as always, continue to spot those limiting beliefs when they rise up today. And the second you see yourself saying, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, why did I say something so stupid? Uh, now's not a good time. I better not say what I really feel. You're going to interrupt that old default and you're going to insert something that's positive because that is the work of doing a mindset reset. It's not a one and done. It's something you do all day long because you are fighting against a lifetime of limiting beliefs. All right. Um, what else was I going to say? In case nobody else tells you today, I want to be the one to tell you that I love you. And I believe in your ability to make your life better. I believe in your ability to be happier. I believe in your ability to pursue your dreams. And that's why I'm here every day to remind you of that fact and that you got this. I have studied morning routines, journaling methods, the science of productivity. It has taken me three years to figure out the perfect morning routine journaling method. It takes me less than five minutes, less than five minutes. Each prompt in the journaling method is backed by science. It is designed to make your mindset more powerful. It's designed to give you control. It's designed to leverage the world's most powerful research around focus and around happiness. And literally, it takes you less than five minutes. I'm going to walk you through step by step this week the science behind each one of the prompts. I invite you to print this out. I invite you to go to the five second journal and look at the science. And I invite you to think about what's working for you so you can create a morning routine that really empowers your mindset. Because I don't want you to wake up in the morning and immediately let the world in. You're under siege all day long from the world, from your friends, from your work, from your emails, from your social media, from the television, from the 24-hour news cycle. Your dreams deserve 10 to 30 minutes in the morning for you to get your head on straight, for you to focus yourself on things that are positive, for you to figure out how to build momentum and make progress on something that matters to you today, and for you to work on building your deliberate way of thinking so that by doing so, you're going to reprogram your default network in your brain so that your mind automatically starts filtering the world in a way that works for you, 
that's why I'm teaching you this, because it's all building on the things you learned in week one, on days one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we're on day nine now. So the first prompt is very, very simple. And the first prompt is all about your mood. So the second that you wake up, remember you're going to get out of bed. If your alarm is your phone, you're going to turn the alarm off, but you're going to leave your phone where it is, and you're not going to take your phone with you to journal because I do not want you tempted to even look at it. I want your head clear. I want you present. I want 10 lousy minutes for your dreams. Don't your dreams deserve that? Doesn't your sanity and your happiness and your sense of control deserve 10 lousy minutes in the morning? Of course it does. So the first thing I want you to think about is your mood. And the reason why I'm starting with your mood is because there is tremendous research about your mood in the morning and how the mood that you have in the morning and the energy level that you have can impact your confidence all day long. It can impact your productivity all day long. And it's super important for you to do something first thing in the morning to get present to your mood and your energy and then do something intentional to boost it because that will have an established, science-backed, proven impact on your productivity and your focus and your happiness all day long. So there's a very simple prompt at the top. It just is, how do I feel? This is your inner compass. This, this is how you read your energy. Um, it's a little scale, much like a gas tank in a car, from empty to full, depleted is empty, and full is energized. Me, this morning, I woke up feeling meh, mm, you want to, and then over here, you're going to explain why do you feel this way. Now, it's important to identify why you feel meh or why you feel energized and excited because it makes you present. You see, we're tuning you into your inner wisdom. We are teaching you how to be present and mindful. And even if when you get present, you get present to something that's negative, we're teaching you how to turn it around. See, negative isn't bad. It just is what it is. When you recognize that you woke up and you're feeling, which is how I felt this morning, now that you're present to it, you've got the power to get deliberate and shift it. So why did I wake up and go, Meh. I'll tell you why. Because there was a, some woman in the room next to me who was awake at 4.15 this morning yapping to the person next to her. They weren't, you know, doing anything that I hate hearing in a hotel room, other people through the wall, if you know what I mean, I'm keeping this family friendly. But she was just talking and talking and talking. And then I woke up again at 4.37 and I woke up again at 5.12 and I woke up again at 5.57. And then I woke up again at 6.20 and then I just got up. I mean, my alarm hadn't even gotten up yet. And I was so annoyed. And that's why it was like, meh because of this chick next to me in the hotel room. I was so, that is actually the first thing that I said to Mandy. So I wrote down, I feel this way because I kept getting interrupted in my sleep and woken up by this person and that bothered me. And the other reason why I feel meh is my neck kind of hurts. Sleeping in so many hotel beds, it's been lousy for my 50 year old neck. So now the next thing that you're gonna do, how long did that take? Five seconds, five seconds to circle this, five seconds to explain why. Now the next one, most important, to feel more energized, I can. We want to boost your mood in the morning. It takes five seconds to think about it. So I wrote down, I'm going to get up and exercise. So my business partner, Mandy, and I, we schlepped our way to a soul cycle class, a 45-minute spin class here. It was, I am not, in, I'm not in spin shape. That's what I learned this morning. But let me tell you, it boosted my energy. So in just those three five-second questions, I have leveraged very profound and powerful science around mood to take control of my mindset. I could have easily in my old life woken up, been interrupted by some woman next door to me in the hotel all night long, been annoyed about it, carried that like, oh, I didn't get enough sleep all through my entire day. All through my entire day. How many of you have done that? You got a lousy night's sleep, or somebody interrupted you when you're sleeping in a hotel, like what happened to me, or the dog barked and had to go out at three o'clock in the morning, or maybe one of your kids came home after a night of partying and then you were upset and you had to deal with that. Then you went back. And so you wake up and your mood is lousy. And then all day long, you basically make one moment where you wake up in a bad mood 
become a bad day. You're not going to do that anymore. That's the power of a mindset reset. And that's why you're going to start with mood when you wake up. Now, today we are building on your morning routine. We have already covered in week one, default versus deliberate thinking. We have already covered, this is driving me nuts, this little line here. I think that's a little bit better. We've already cut, oh, see, I'm, I'm sorry. For those of you on Instagram, you can't see that there's like a lightsaber going through my face on the Facebook broadcast, but whatever. Um, if I get closer, maybe that'll work because it is driving me bananas. <laughs> this is what it like. This is what it's like to live with ADD. Um, we have already covered deliberate versus default thinking. We've covered the science of visualization. We've talked about how to spot limiting beliefs and how to become the kind of person that when you notice that you're thinking this and it doesn't serve you, that you deliberately think that something that is positive, that is a story about you. I want to tell you something. Um, just this morning, I was talking to one of my favorite people, and she has the exact same story that I used to have, that she's a bad person. And so consequently, she sees evidence all over the place for where she's bad. And she's going through this big breakup right now, and the person that she is breaking up with, basically, while the breakup process was happening, she bas he basically said to her, in a number of different ways, you're a bad person. Push the button push the button, push the button, push the button. We all have buttons that anybody or anything can push. And that's why it's so important if you have limiting beliefs from your past that you change them. Because if you tell yourself that you're a bad person, you will see evidence that you are. And more importantly, you will also start to act consistently with a bad person. <clears throat> and here's the truth, you're not a bad person. My friend is an amazing person. I'm an amazing person. And so it is critical for you to take control of your life and of your thinking. And it starts with the story that you say about yourself. And so we were talking this morning about how in this next chapter post breakup, the most important thing to go forward with is the belief and the deliberate thinking that you are a good person. Look for all the good things that you do. Look for the people that are around you that do love you deeply. Look at how compassionate you are. Look at the little changes that you're making. Look at the little wins all day. Look at how helpful you are. Find the evidence and it's going to make it easier and easier and easier for you to continue to be deliberate about what you're thinking about. So we've already covered all this. You can go back and review all the videos on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page anytime that you want. Anybody can sign up for this, melrobbins.com slash mindset reset. I want to give some shout outs to some people because I cannot believe how many people are changing their lives. But let me stop that. I actually can believe. I can believe how many of you are changing your lives. And here's why. It took me about 45 years to really seriously start to go to work on how I think to dismantle the limiting beliefs that I have. And when I did, it was such a profound game changing level of personal development for me that I know personally how it can shift the ground that you're standing on when you shift the thoughts that you're thinking. And so I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that if you're actually trying the micro things that I'm telling you to do every single day that are building not only on decades of science and research, but they're building every day on one another. We started out with thinking habits and now right now you're in the middle of a training about your morning routine. And I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But when you make these tiny changes, particularly about how you think, it will change everything about your life because you don't realize it, but we walk through life with a filter and that filter has been programmed by the stories that you tell yourself and the filter reinforces the stories because that filter that you see the world through wouldn't it be nice if we just saw the world through glitter this filter that you have if it's negative about yourself you're only going to see negative things and you're only going to have negative things come in and when nice things happen to you you're not going to believe that you deserve it so it's essential that we identify the filter that you see the world through and we remove it and we put something that's clear and that's amplifying and that's positive in its place. 
And one of the things that's really important in addition to the mental habits is your morning routine. And the reason why your morning routine is so important is because it's the start of your day. If you wake up and think crappy thoughts, you are setting the table to have that continue. And so I am training you to take control of your morning and it begins with what you do as soon as you wake up. We've already covered why you should leave your phone in the outside of your bedroom at night. We've already covered the science behind why when the alarm gets up, you need to get up. You should not hit the snooze button because it puts you in a, a neurological state called sleep inertia that impacts your focus, your happiness, your mood. We have also talked about the fact that your dreams are worth 10 minutes. I actually think they're worth an hour, but most of us only have 10 minutes before the chaos begins. So I want you to find 10 lousy minutes for your dreams every morning. So after you turn off your alarm, you get out of bed, do not look at your phone. You go straight to a spot and you take this little template that we gave you for free. Just go to melrobbins.com slash mindset reset. You can also find this, by the way, at fivesecondjournal.com. So on the website 5, the number 5, secondjournal.com, you will find not only this downloadable template, but you're going to find a ton of videos about the science behind uh, the journaling method I use, the science and research uh, that's very recent about productivity. And today we're going to talk about my most favorite piece of research, and that comes from Harvard Business School, and it's called the Progress Principle. So I'm going to walk you through my journaling method. This is the one that I did today. Um, oh. You can't see it on Instagram. Hold on a second. There we go. And so today, today in my journal, first of all, we covered this yesterday, really important for you to start with assessing your mood. And the reason why we want you to assess your mood is because research proves that your mood first thing in the morning impacts your level of productivity, your sense of focus, and your happiness all day long. So super important as a mindfulness act to wake up and tune in and ask yourself, well, how am I feeling? Am I depleted or am I energized? In yesterday's video, I shared that I kind of circled this near the depleted in the meh kind of end because somebody had kept me awake in the hotel all night. Well, today I'm really good. And the reason why, I, why I'm really good, and this is probably too much information, is because I'd been kind of backed up after our uh, holiday trip to Tanzania, if you know what I mean. And so yesterday, the train finally got moving again. And so I feel really good. I'm also home so I can cook dinner for the family. And I was able to drop off my son and pick up my son. And that just makes me feel really, really good. Um, to feel even more energized, I went to yoga class today. Um, and so this is what we covered in yesterday's video, but I'm just showing you. These questions take five seconds. And if you learn how to tune in, to read your energy, and then to think of one thing you could do to boost it. By boosting your mood, you're going to boost your focus, you're going to boost your productivity, you're going to boost your sense of control. It's pretty amazing. The next thing we're going to talk about is this puppy right here. This is the most powerful part of the five-second journal. And again, don't buy it. You don't need to. We emailed you free templates that you can use. You don't ever need to buy this thing. You can just do this in a journal somewhere. You can do this in your own journal. You can do this in a notebook. You can do this in your head, whatever you want. Um, this is the progress principle. This sucker right here has changed my life and it, it helps me be a wildly successful woman. Um, you know, we're launching a brand new daytime talk show that's going to have a staff of 70 people and it's 175 shows a year. My business partners, Mandy and Chris and I run a media company in Boston. We have a project launching with Audible Originals on February 7th. We put out videos every single day on social media. We are engaging with more than a million people a day on social media. Uh, on top of that, we have a ton of, you know, I'm delivering 47 speeches between now and the end of May, and I'm still married after 23 years, and my kids talk to me. So I think I'm doing pretty good. And part of it is because I've learned to leverage the progress principle. I don't try to get everything done. Every morning after I assess my mood, based on research from Harvard Business School, I leverage something called the progress principle. And this is what the progress principle states. The people that feel the most productive and the most satisfied with their work are people who make meaningful progress on something that matters to them. That's it. That's it. They're not the people that get 155,000 things done. 
The progress principle states that if you make little progress every single day, just incremental steps forward on something that matters to you, you will be more productive, you'll be more satisfied, you'll be happier, you'll be more fulfilled, you'll be more present. And I got to tell you, based on personal experience, this has been a game changer for me. So today, my top project, this is my top project. Brace yourself because it's not that, that ground shaking. My top project today was simply to brain dump in one place all the loose things that I want to make sure are getting done in our company. That's it. All the projects that I just, that, that's it. That was just the top project that popped into my mind. Then you're going to say this project matters to me. Why? Well, it matters to me because it stresses me out when I feel like there are loose ends to things and when I feel like I don't know what's happening. And so I need to do this for me. What's one small action I can do to move forward? One small action. You want to see how incremental this is. The only action that I committed to taking today based on the progress principle was to carry my five second journal around so that I could use the other side to brain dump the things that I want to make sure that I'm capturing so I can go over um, this list with the team. That's it. That's it. And I've been brain dumping things as they come up. And there's not as many loose ends as I like manifest in my head. But the good news is I'm making progress. I feel accomplished. I feel satisfied. And so will you. So all I want you to do today is I want you to continue everything that we've talked about. The, the kind of training part is over. We're trying to keep these training modules around 10 to 15 minutes. So the training part's over. Out of service to you, let me do a recap of what I want you to do today. And then I'm going to do some shout outs and I'm going to answer a few questions. So by way of recap, what is your assignment? Well, your assignment always and forever from this point forward, when you do a mindset reset, it's not an event, it's a process. It's something you practice all day long. The moment you notice that your thoughts are drifting to something that's not serving you, you're going to get deliberate and you're going to direct your thoughts to something that are positive. That's something you're going to do all day long. Visualization, also something that's super important. At the beginning of January, we covered the science of visualization. This is one of the most important videos I've ever done because I explain the reason why visualization works. And I also explain the two-step method for how to visualize based on science. So if you haven't watched that, go to January 1st or January 2nd, find the video, watch it, look through your emails. It's all there. Um, but practice visualization. Now, the way you set yourself up for your morning routine, because that's what we're covering yesterday, today, and on the 11th day, we're going to do the final two prompts in the, my, the morning routine that I do. Tonight, I want you to plug your phone in outside your bedroom. You're going to turn off all the alerts. You're going to leave the ringer on, and you're going to set your alarm. You're going to go to bed. When the alarm goes off, no snooze button. Get up turn off the alarm, and then go take those first 10 minutes of the day and you use them to create a powerful morning routine to help you get focused, to help you think positive things, to help you identify your priorities, and to help you make progress on your dreams, something that matters to you. I invite you to use the one that we emailed to you, the five-second journal method. You're going to assess your mood and you're going to do the progress principle. You can also move down to the other final prompts. I'll be explaining those in tomorrow's training. If you want to include visualization in your morning routine tomorrow, fantastic. If you have time to do a little micro exercise, fantastic. If you want to add in something else like five deep breaths or go walk the dog in the woods, whatever, whatever works for you, because if it works for you, you'll do it. Okay. I'm trying to get you to become more deliberate about the way you're waking up and what you're thinking about and how you start your day so that you can figure out the best way that works for you. We have already covered the science around the way that your brain works. We have already discussed how you have a default network of neurons and neural pathways in your brain that filter the world. They allow what comes in and what comes out. We've talked about limiting beliefs. We've trained you on the power of being a deliberate thinker. We've trained you on how you think this instead of thinking that when you have very negative beliefs. And now we're in the portion of the program where we're talking about the power of your morning routine. Why is a morning routine critical for your mindset? The reason why your morning routine is critical for your mindset 
is a couple reasons. Number one, let's just think common sense. If you wake up and you feel horrible and you're in a bad mood and you pick up your phone or you turn on the news and the first inbound information that hits your brain is negative or it triggers something in you emotionally that is negative, you are starting your day off on the wrong foot. And you might even have a habit that if you wake up and the day begins as a bad day, that you then spend the rest of your day convincing yourself that this entire day is a bad day. That is a major mistake. It's also not true because you get to choose how you view what's happening around you. And the second reason why your morning routine is critical is because the first two hours that your brain is awake are the best two hours for your brain all day. And so I believe that if you create a very powerful morning routine and the one that I am recommending that you start off with and then you make it your own, you add in things, you take away things that you don't use or that you're not gonna like, but everything I'm recommending is based on the science around productivity, focus, happiness, um, the way that your mind is actually wired to work. And that's why I'm recommending everything that I've been recommending in the program. I will explain very briefly the steps of the morning routine, but if this is the first video you're watching, it's day 11. Go back to day nine, go back to day 10, where I really begin talking about the power of a morning routine, why it's important, and I explain the science in detail. For today's training, we're gonna talk about the third step in your morning routine. So when you get to the third step, by this point, you have already woken up on time and gotten out of bed when the alarm rang. You didn't hit the snooze button. You've already turned off the alarm on your phone if you're using your phone for your alarm. You have not looked at your phone. You have not turned on the TV. You have not let any information from the outside world cross the threshold into your precious brain yet. Why? Well, the reason why is I believe that you and your dreams, they deserve 10 lousy minutes. In fact, I think they deserve an hour, but I'm just gonna go with 10 minutes because I know that you can find 10 lousy minutes to focus on your dreams, to focus on becoming a deliberate thinker, to plan out your day, and to figure out what your priority is. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed that video, by God, please subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thank you so much for being here. We've got so much amazing stuff coming. Thank you so much for sending this stuff to your friends and your family. I love you. We create these videos for you. So make sure you subscribe. Mwah.